Hello friends and welcome back to another very exciting art technique video with McVeigh and Gandhi. First thing we got here is we had to gather all of our supplies. We've got our watercolor palette. Isn't it lovely? Nice and pristine and new. We've got water because you can't use watercolor without first adding water. Then we have a little scrap piece of paper. I made it one of my nicer pieces of paper, as thick as you can find it. If you've got good thick paper in your sketchbook, great. If you've got paper that is a little on the thin side, you can still practice these techniques and they are perfectly acceptable. It'll just make your paper just kind of ripple a little bit. Then we have a paper towel. Your paper towel will be your best friend. Some pretty key things to remember about watercolor is uh, that are also listed on our instructions in our slideshow is that watercolors are transparent. Guess what that means? They are see-through. When we paint them onto this paper, you can see straight through them. So if you draw a line with your pencil, you can see straight through the paint and you'll see the pencil underneath. So really good idea is to always draw very lightly, like so, so that you can either lighten them with your eraser first or you don't see it very much through the paint because it's transparent, just like a window or stained glass, actually. Then there's this other thing. We have this whole rainbow of colors. We've got violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And then down here we have brown and black. What we don't have on here is white because they're transparent. The intention is that you use the white of the paper to act as the white to, to lighten colors. So when you're painting, the white paper is the white that you would use. So if you wanted something to remain white, then you would have to leave the white of the paper. So I'm gonna add some water onto this palette. It's the first time it's ever been used, so I've gotta put a lot of water in there and just kinda of roll it around a little bit. I don't wanna gouge it. What's important to note is that you don't want your watercolor to be sticky. We don't want any sticky paint. Sticky paint doesn't dry very well. So we're gonna put a lot of water. We're gonna activate the watercolor paint and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use the white of the paper to lighten the paint. So this is called um, just a wash. We're putting it straight onto dry paper. We're gonna put this wash across the paper and see how dark it is. If I want it to remain very vibrant, I just add a little bit more water and I can do large areas of bright red. If I need this to get lighter, I can't add more of this stuff right here. What I have to do is add a little bit of water to it and then it'll get lighter. Now here's the deal, this is okay for big areas, right? But if I have too much water and I'm trying to lighten as I go, I may have to use my paper towel and dab off some of the excess water before trying to continue. So notice how we went very nicely from dark to light and the reason that we got pink here is because the white of the paper is showing through the very thin, like there's a lot of water in it, right? So it thinned out all of my pigment. Pigment is just another word for a color of paint, right? Pigment is the paint color. Another thing to know is that when you have wet color like this, let's change the color. If we try and put another color next to it, like for instance, blue, I'm gonna put a lot of water into this and activate my blue. So I'm gonna paint right next to my red with my blue. Guess what happens? Is my red and my blue going to stay separate? No, man, what happens? Wet, next to wet paint, blends together. And it's kind of pretty if you know what color you're working with. However, let's say we're not using Roy G. Biv. Remember we learned about Roy G. Biv? Let's say we take some orange and we try and blend it because we want the colors to blend, right? Let's say we really want them to blend. So we take some orange color and we put it right next to our wet blue paint. Guess what color? orange and blue make. If they're not right next to each other in the color, in the Roy G. Biv color wheel, they're gonna blend together and they're gonna kinda make a muddy brown color. If you want a muddy brown color, go for it. If you don't want your colors to blend, guess what you have to do? You have to wait for them to dry. If the colors feel even cold, it's probably not totally dry. If it feels warm, or if it doesn't feel cold at all, then it's dry. So on our paper, it probably won't take too long to dry if you're using nice watercolor paper. Here's another fun little fact. Whenever you use watercolor, your water is going to go where, or your color is going to go wherever you put the water. So let's say you put the water all around on your paper. 
right? We got all kinds of, this is only spots where I'm putting the water, right? And then I take my color and I drop it into one end. Check that out. It's like a science experiment, right? Let's go from the other side, bam. And then they can meet in the middle because notice how that blue is not going anywhere where I didn't already have water. You see how it looks like a little snake now. So if you want the color to go somewhere, then you can wet that first. That's a really good trick, okay? So let's say, for instance, you have a large area of color that you would like to paint that. You want it to all be one color. Um, maybe we haven't done any green yet. Let's do some green. So let's say we have a large area of color and we want to make sure that it's really smooth and it doesn't leave a blossom. A blossom is if you let one part of the paper dry before you get to the other side, because you're painting, you're trying to paint really quickly. So if you get from here to here and you're not very fast at it, then this start might start dry before you get to this side. So if it starts to dry before you get to that side, then it could leave a little line in there. That's a, blo a bloom, that's what that's called. Now, a really good plan, if you're trying to do a whole area in one or two colors, you can work wet into wet. You can just wet the paper first. Just make it all where you want it to be. Let's say you want this whole area to be green. So I'm gonna put the water down first and just wet, pre-wet the paper just with water. Then I can take my green and do that large area of color and it'll blend nice and pretty and it should go across. I mean, you might want it to get lighter. If you have too much water, you can always take your paintbrush or your paper towel and take off some of the excess water if you have too much water it'll also lighten the paper so if you've got a pre-wet piece of paper it's going to make it easier to do a large area of color so remember that if you're doing a big area of one color pre-wet the paper and then you can blend it you might want to blend it from one color to another and you can add in in that pre-wet area you can add some color that you know is going to blend pretty and then that stuff's just going to smush around kind of like when we do our candy corns you might want to go from orange to yellow just like this where you pre-wet it and then you put orange and then you put yellow and it blends right together. So make sure that you're thinking ahead of the game and you're keeping in mind how you want to do things. So whenever you're putting a shade of a color, there's something to consider. A shade of a color is whenever we add a little bit of black to darken it. So let's say we want to mix a color I recommend mixing it in a separate little lid so you don't accidentally fill up your lid here with a whole bunch of paint colors and then when you close your lid it gets all in your paint and it mucks up all your pretty colors. We're trying to keep all of these really clean. We want our yellow to stay yellow, we want our green to stay green, and if we accidentally put color up here it's going to transfer into our palette. It does ugly things. You should always keep your palette upright and if you've got a lot of water in there you got to make sure that you keep it flat so that it doesn't mess up your color palette. Now let's say we've got some red, but we want to make a maroon. And if you know anything about color mixing, maroon is just red with a little bit of black in it. If you didn't know that, welcome to Color Theory 101. We haven't actually learned all about the colors yet, but we're going to be doing that soon. So here's some red, and you're thinking, you know, I really want this to have an A&M theme, so I'm going to add a little black to it. Well, if you add just a little, I mean, just a smidgen of black to this paint right here, Y'all see that? All that does is turn it totally black where you put that black paint. A little bit of black goes a long way. And so that's totally turning it, I mean, just almost completely black. See this line right here? You can't even tell that's got any red in it. So what you need to be really, really careful of is that if you're using, I'm cleaning my paintbrush out in between colors, if you're using a little black and you want a little bit of darker color red, like a slightly maroon color, you can plan it out in your lid here in this extra lid in this little extra palette this could be a um, could be on a plastic plate of some kind or a Tupperware lid you can take a little bit until you find the color that you like and then practice it on your test paper and see if you like that color is that the maroon that you're looking for good you've tested it out on your test paper you can use it on your project now so you're gonna get to utilize uh, pieces of test paper anytime that you need to uh, to watercolor this is a good idea. Always have your little piece of paper, okay? So if we add a little bit more water to it, then we can lighten it because water lightens. There's an even lighter version. Water lightens 
and paint brightens. So that's a good one to remember too. Now let's say there's too much water in here. I can always tap off a little bit of the water and then I can see that's the same color. It's just less water so it looks brighter. So even less water and it gets even lighter. This is shown as a value skill. Just by adding a little bit of water at a time, tapping off the excess water, just gets lighter and lighter, dark to light. Anytime that you are working with watercolor, it is also a really good idea to work light to dark. So let's say for instance, we are doing our candy corn right here and we've got our lightest colors. And then we know that our candy corn, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rinse out my paintbrush. I'm gonna put this over here so y'all can see. Rinse out my paintbrush every time I do this. All right, so I can get the yellow out and then I can grab some orange and blend it into my yellow. So let's say we got a little candy corn color going here. I've blended it a little bit with my paintbrush, dark to light, there's a candy corn color. What's great about this is that I have my pretty colors, right? I've got my yellow, I've got my orange, but this candy corn needs to have a little bit of shadow. So we can very, very easily take a smidge in a black. Remember, it doesn't take much, a little bit of black goes a long way. And while this is while this is wet, we can take a little bit of black, just a smidgen and put it right at the edge of this orange and I can make a shadow. I'm gonna rinse out my paintbrush and blend it up because my orange dried a little bit. So I'm gonna re-wet my paint and let it blend up a little because you can reconstitute that watercolor that starts to dry just with a little bit of extra paint. So I'm gonna re-wet it and look how I can add a little bit of shading onto that orange. Now I've sort of, by blending it, I got rid of some of the orange so I can add a little bit more orange to it and it just goes back onto, and it makes it that bright orange again. Some of my students will say, but Miss McVeigh, if you put it on there, it gets messed up, it stains the paper, it's, got all, it's already on there, and then it dries, then what? Then you can do a thing called lifting. Lifting is going to save your life because watercolor is actually very forgiving. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to lift some highlights out of this little spot right here, but it's already dry. That okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, just clean water and my very clean paintbrush. And I'm gonna put the shape on here of what I want. So let's say I want a nice big M right here. So all I did was put some water on here in an M shape. You might be able to see it, there it is. Now, if I take and I dry my paintbrush, just like this, and then I pull right where I put that water on there, it's gonna lift the water off of the, the red paint. And then I'm gonna dry it again and I'm gonna pull that water off with my dry paintbrush. I have to keep rinsing out and drying my paintbrush and take off the excess water and it lifts the paint right off the surface of the page. Do you see that? Now right here, it got a little dry. So I'm gonna put some more water. You may have to do this several times. Put a little bit more water, dry your paintbrush, and it'll lift right off of there. You see that crazy business? It is getting really bright. Now it's never gonna get all the way back to white. I'm gonna put a little bit of water dry my paintbrush and then lift off the excess paint and it is making this really beautiful design in what used to be really bright red so i'm gonna put a little bit of water dry my paintbrush and lift it right off of there dry my paintbrush lift it right back off of there now if you get really impatient you can always take it and pat your your paper towel onto it and it'll lift it even more for all of those like let's say we wanted to lift that it's really wet it's got too much water we can use our paint our paper towel and just lift some of that water off of there and just tap it just a little bit. It'll lift off the water, it'll lighten it. And um, this is for if you want really controlled things. But right here, this is proof that it's a very forgiving surface. However, if you try and scrub the surface with your paintbrush like this, if you're scrubbing and scrubbing, you're gonna do two things. Number one, you're gonna tear your brush up real bad because your brush, your paintbrush, is meant to be gentle like this and never scrubbed. We do not scrub like a toothbrush because that's gonna tear up your paintbrush. All the little hairs are gonna start to fall out and um, it's also going to tear up the surface of your paper. If you start scrubbing the surface of wet paper, it's gonna do like this. You see what I'm doing? See that? I'm gonna try and show y'all right up close. Look at that. Okay, so you got some water there and then we scrub the surface of the paper. Holy moly, you see that? It is 
hoe up from the flow up. It is messed up. So if you want to mess up your paper, scrub your heart away. But if you scrub your heart away onto your paper, you're going to mess it up. Please don't do that. I was just kidding. You shouldn't want to tear up your paper. Never. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is little tiny details. So this paintbrush, speaking of paintbrush, it is meant to be either big areas like we did earlier or little, little tiny areas. You see this little bitty tiny surface right there? Yeah. So we can do very large things. I'm just going to use red again because it's already ready to go. If I have a lot, you see how much water is in here? It's just like huge amounts of water. Okay. If I have a lot of water in there, it's going to be big like that. Okay. If I tap that excess water out, it's going to give me more control, all the excess water. And then I can use the very tip of my paintbrush and I can get little tiny, tiny, tiny details. So you should be able to do large and small details. So I also want you to practice a little bit. You can write your name. You can do all the little tiny details with the very end of your paintbrush. If you press down on it, it's not gonna be a little tiny because it won't be the, the point of the paintbrush. You want it to be the very end of the paintbrush. Just little tiny details. So you see how small that is? Look at the difference. We went from gigantic, looks like a watch of blood, to the littlest tiny little detail right there. So small, little tiny dots. I'm telling you, you, you don't need an ink pen whenever you can get the tiny little details. So this is a lot of different things we've covered that your watercolor is transparent. You can see pencil lines through it. If you put watercolor on top of the pencil line, you're never gonna be able to erase it. So you have to lighten your pencil lines first. We know that there's no white in the watercolor, that the white of the paper is the white. We know that wet next to wet blends right together. We know that the paint goes wherever you put the water. We know that a lot of water lightens it and a lot of paint brightens it. But remember, never let your paint be sticky because your paint will not dry when it's sticky. It's gonna stick to the other papers. It's gonna get stuck and then it's gonna tear and it's gonna be a big mess. A little bit of black goes a long way. That was another thing we learned. Working light to dark right so you always want to work light to dark and then you do large areas first and then you paint details last that's the very last thing that I need to talk about if you do all the big areas first then you put your details you can paint your details right on top of it so I'm just gonna grab a darker color right I got my large area first I can write on here Gandhi because I let this dry already right so I could write Gandhi on here and it looked great there it is however if I go back and I'm like, oh darn, I forgot to do the background behind McVeigh. So let me go ahead and paint that. Whoop, made it bounce. Let me go ahead and paint that. It's dry, so I can paint the background, right? So let's say I wanna paint a green background behind my very pretty red letters. So let me go ahead and paint the green background. Well, okay, for one thing, it's just covering everything up. I can't see anything. So I go to lighten it. Let me lighten that. Oh no, what happened to my details? My details are gone because it's water soluble. You gotta do details last man or all your details are just gonna fade away and you're gonna get frustrated. Got it? All right, so you're going to do some lovely little designs like this. You can make it much prettier and creative. You can make an actual work of art. But what I wanna see is that you are testing out all these different things. So look at the watercolor rules that are in your slideshow and make sure that you have showed me a little bit of all of this.